Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Wednesday afternoon, April 14th. We're looking at Window Traders' market profile of the SPY, IWMN, Triple Qs, and a tale of two days here. Very interesting day. We almost, almost had an outside day down in SPY. We do not. However, we do stop the one time framing up. This would have been day 13. I think the record was 14 days, which culminated on April 15, 1971. So if we could have done it for two more days, it would have been a 50-year anniversary. We could have tied it. But we don't do that. We barely took out yesterday's low, but we did take it out. So the one-time framing is done. We are in balance in the daily. We have a nine-wide POC, nine for nine wide. We could have gone down $200 in the afternoon, and it would not have been lowered. That's not something to totally ignore. Okay? that, that That's something to... to Keep in mind, same with Russell, nine for nine wide. They never even took out yesterday's, uh, today's low in A after their opening drive. They did have a very long buy tail. A lot of it was taken back. But, um, again, they couldn't lower their puck. Triple Qs, they had trouble from the day's start. They opened, drove straight down. Their all-time high is now in the overnight from this well, or pre-market from this morning. They drove straight down, but we never went trend. That held. I actually took a uh, call play, which I'll go over in a minute in Qs before I get to my spy trades. I took a call play um, because I thought they would defend some of these levels down here the first time, which they did when I went long in, where am I? B period. Was it B? Yes, it was B period. So I went long in B period in the triple Qs against basically value low and the afternoon pullback low. And when C open, ripped. It didn't take out B's low right away. Ripped right up and put me in the money. I was long to 338 calls. It was a nice, nice quick trade. I didn't stay in it, believe me, until it went all the way up. But it was a nice trade because we were, we did have uh, one time framing down the trend day down uh, initially. But it popped right up. It defended that level the first time. Um, and then they end up only six wide. And they have G as an afternoon rally high. Russell, the only thing they really have is their nine wide. And the day's high and low. Um, you can use L's low, I guess, as an afternoon pullback. I don't know if I would do that. But you could if you want to. Now let's get to SPY. We open above the single prints remember we had a we had a double distribution day yesterday open above the single prints get into them in a and then that's it they come above the opening so what i did i did not think i did not think we would take out both our all-time high and overnight high that quick so i started a small short play again it was a small one i traded today's the 415 puts that expired today i bought i think a small lot to start. A 10 lot. We took out the high another 10 lot. I'm like, okay. I didn't think we were going to go run away. We had the ECB speaking at 10. We had Powell at noon. I'm like, uh, I was kind of surprised we even took out the day's high. Added a big chunk right around A's high. And they came in a bit for me. And it worked out very nicely. So I was never really in danger. Because I started a very small one. And when I added it, um, I added, it was, it was a perfect add-on at the perfect time. Because we didn't go much higher. Then I didn't do anything. BC, I didn't do anything till D period. When D period, um, we flushed out. We went back and forth through yesterday's range, the first four time frames. Then we did in E and F, we did in G, and then H couldn't get it, and then we obviously rolled over. I did take a long in D against the opening. Nothing huge, because what I was waiting for was to see us take out maybe the day's low, fill the single prints, and then take a bigger position to get back because at that time value was clearly higher so I only had a small trade but it worked out nicely as we went back up to POC um, I period took a long in I thinking the same thing we would make a new low and then come back in obviously that didn't happen uh, I only bought small you could tell a sense something had changed. They started getting more momentum, more tempo, more volume. So that I got out of that long sooner rather than later. Right? It's a big difference when you fade a low and you see it's not getting tempo or volume, or as opposed to what happened here. So I didn't. I got out of it. 
took a loss, but nothing big. Um, and then K period. K period did not take out IJ's low. K period open. I was set to take a put play against Jay's low because I thought they would defend a one-time frame, but it didn't get close enough to Jay's high. K pulled in. I actually took a decent-sized call play in the first 15 minutes because it didn't look like it wanted to take out eyes low, and I was right, and it went back up, and it turned out to be a very nice trade. Um, I was long 40 calls, so that was nice. I did it again when K came down, but this time I was like, nah, this isn't really right. And what happened was, K came down, I was like, um, I was long, I bought 10 around eyes low, I bought another 10, I was losing money, I'm like, I don't like this, uh, you know, I did that for a reason, I thought we would defend an eyes low on the first long, which worked out nicely, I'm like, that reason's out the window, I took it off, and believe it or not, right before K ended, it popped up a little bit, and I bought 100 I went to Friday's 415 puts and I bought a hundred of them at, I'm trying to think what price, what I paid for them. Uh, I can tell you real, real quick. Just give me one second. I bought, bought them at 418. Bought a hundred of them at 418 for Friday's puts and K opened. I mean, I'm sorry, L opened and immediately started Took out K's low, started going. I sold 100 of them between 427 and 454. Beautiful trade. Best trade of the day by far for me. Although that A trade was nice too. Um, and then I got out of that. And then M period, I called M almost to the T. It took out L's high rather quickly. I said I would short A's low if it got there. But it didn't even move and then got back into L's range pretty quick, pretty good. And I told the room there's a very good chance now we will have a reversal ball. And I finally put my money where my mouth was. I didn't. We didn't get a reversal ball. We have a poor low. But I still uh, took a 15 lot and did well on that when M came in. So I had a good day today. So we do not have an outside day down. We do not. But at least for now, the buyers have been slowed on the daily time frame as we are in balance. Destinations for tomorrow. Upside. I was going to use L's low, but we didn't probe. We do have a poor low, though. So our first destination on the upside isn't until our 9Y. So believe it or not, I believe for my money's worth, and I'll show you on the charts, I don't think longs are panicking yet. We barely took out yesterday's low. You didn't accelerate. You didn't pick up um, uh, buyers, that you, uh, sellers that really stretched this. So for my money's worth, I was... Longs that got nothing for their efforts up here getting out. And then J, K, L, and even M was short pushing this down. So, my first destination on the upside is yesterday's pocket 413.29. So if we open above M's high, this is going to be kind of a line of sand for me, at least tomorrow. I'm not using it as a destination, but it kind of looks like where change took place. So it's going to be interesting. If we don't get above there, the shorts might stay okay. But if we do, the shorts are going to run for cover, and we'll get to that pock. Then we have 413.57, afternoon rally high of G. And then today's all-time high, 413.96. For the downside, we have today's low, 410.87, which is a poor low. And then we don't have anything to 410.20, which is Monday's low. Single prints, remember, they held 410.19, get filled at 409.98. Afternoon pullback low, 409.50. 408.26 daily low and 407.84 afternoon pullback low and I from April 8th. And then let's go to the charts. If I can get to them, I apologize. Here we are. So just quickly, the monthly still is health, very healthy, one time frame and up six months. We still have the gap weekly. Buyers aren't going to get really worried unless we take out last week's low right now. Okay? Bottom line. We're one time framing up. It's healthy. We still have a gap. So here's where change took place a little bit. Finally, after 12 days, we came into balance on the daily. It's a two-day balance. You could use today. And believe it or not, you could even say it's a one-day balance. But you could use today's high and today's low. Right? Because they encompassed. They, we took out both sides of yesterday. 
but we don't close with an, uh, an outside day down. Now, if we take out today's low, then now you might start getting more buyers nervous. The more daily lows you take out, the more anybody who's long up inside of them will start getting nervous. And the more shorts will push down. That's when you'd get the big flush. We didn't get that today. <clears throat> so it remains to be seen. Are we going to get it tomorrow? Well, if we stay below A's low and J's high and take out today's low, we might get more acceleration in tempo and volume to the downside. But if we get acceptance back into A's range from today, those shorts are going to cover. And we're going to go and get that pock that never could be lowered. And then we even have to see if we make another attempt at the all-time high. We had an excellent day in the trading room today. Once again, we call them out as we see them, and we were pretty spot on a good part of the day. Come check us out at camelbacktrading.org. Have a great evening, and we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow.